Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, subscribe. The tragic and unjust execution of Anne Lyne and the birth of a martyr. In 1558, when Elizabeth I came to the throne, the people of England were intensely divided by religion. Elizabeth was the sister of Mary I, and Mary made Roman Catholicism the official religion of England. But the country was divided, as many people were Protestants following Henry VIII and the religious changes made by Edward VI. There was a growing number of Puritans as well, and a compromise was needed to be found by Elizabeth. So, in an attempt to unite the country and all the different religious groups, Elizabeth created the religious settlement. But unfortunately, this didn't solve the problem. The Catholics were not as happy as they were under the reign of Mary I, where they had enjoyed religious freedom. But under the reign of Elizabeth, they were asked to make a change to their beliefs or deny their Catholic faith. And outrage poured in, and many Catholics actually chose to leave the country and live abroad, although there were some who stayed but were unhappy, although accepting the change. It is also imperative to remember that during this time there were numerous serious plots against Elizabeth. The idea was to have Elizabeth removed from the throne and replace her with the Catholic Mary Queen of Scots. Now during this time there were people known as recusants. This word describes a person who refused to attend Church of England services. Those caught doing so would be forced to pay a fine of one shilling a week, especially if they did not attend church on holy days, such as a Sunday. But for repeat offenders, the fine would rise to around £20 per month, and in today's money, that is equivalent to thousands. And if you were found guilty of converting someone to Catholicism, you would actually be found guilty of treason, and the punishment for treason was execution. Now today's video is actually about Saint Anne, a remarkable woman who suffered greatly in the English Tudor Reformation and was a tragic victim of the settlement created by Elizabeth I. Anne went against all of the rules of the time to enable her to follow what she believed in. She was born Alice Hyam and she was the daughter of William Hyam. Her grandfather served Henry VIII and he was responsible for the sale of many previously confiscated religious buildings and estates. Anne was born in 1563 and it was in the early 1580s that she actually converted to the Catholic Church. Her family, however, were strictly Protestants, but along with her brother William and her future husband Roger Lyne, she converted to Catholicism. Roger and William were disinherited by their families and Anne lost her dowry. It is thought that it's this point that Anne changed her name and she was no longer known as Alice. Anne's life got significantly worse when her husband and brother were arrested for attending Catholic Mass. They were both imprisoned and fined. Her brother William was eventually released but was heavily monitored by the authorities but her husband, however, was banished from England. Roger went to live in Flounders and would remain there until his death. But even throughout his exile, he sent money to ensure that she was looked after and safe. Roger was actually receiving a small allowance gifted to him by the King of Spain, and it is with some of this money that he was able to send Anne her own safeguard. But in the year of 1594, Roger passed away and Anne was left a widow. Now another individual that we must discuss is John Gerard and he was a very prominent Jesuit priest who opened up a safe house as a refuge to keep Catholic priests safe. This was such a dangerous thing to be doing because during the religious settlement this type of behaviour was forbade. Being a Catholic in this era was quite possibly a death sentence and it is believed that underground worship took place because mass was illegal. Now, 
Anne was placed in charge of the priest refuge owned by Gerard when he was imprisoned, and although Anne became very sickly, she succeeded at running the house for three years whilst he was a prisoner in the Tower of London. But whilst Gerard was in the Tower, he faced terrible torture before eventually managing to escape. And when he was free, Gerard wrote the following. After my escape from prison, Anne Lyne gave up managing the house. By then she was known to many people, and it was unsafe for me to frequent any house that she occupied. Instead, she hires an apartment in another building and continues to shelter priests there. Anne would continue to invite Catholics to hear Mass, but one day she allowed in an unusually large number of people. It was then that some neighbours noticed the crowd, and the constables were soon at the house. Anne was committing a really serious crime. Attending or holding Catholic Mass was banned under the religious settlement. And because the large crowds attracted unwanted attention, the guards were called. Anne, always a quick thinker, managed to help the priests and most people escape, but she and another woman called Margaret Gage were caught and arrested. Margaret Gage was later released on bail and pardoned, but Anne was not so lucky. She was sent to Newgate Prison, whose reputation was brutal. And on the 26th of February 1601, she was tried for her crimes. Anne suffered tremendously whilst imprisoned, and her time in captivity weakened her. And at her trial, although she was not as strong as she once was physically, she remained defiant, headstrong and stubborn. Anne was even suffering with a fever at the time, and during her trial she said something along the lines of, Although I hid a priest, I am only regretful I couldn't hide a thousand more. Anne was then found guilty and sentenced to death for assisting a seminary priest. The authorities then wasted no time arranging Anne's execution, and she was killed at Tyburn. And on the 27th of February 1601, only a day after her trial, Anne was executed, whilst Roger Philcock and Mark Barkworth awaited their turn. Roger and Mark were priests and their punishment was significantly more brutal. They were hung, drawn and quartered. But being a woman, Anne was spared this evil monstrosity and was only hung. Before she met her maker, she said the following, I am sentenced to die for harbouring a Catholic priest, and so far I am far from repenting for what I have done, but I wish with all my soul that where I have entertained one, I could have entertained a thousand. Anne's body then hung from the scaffold, and with death approaching her, the priest scheduled to be executed next, stepped forward and kissed her on the hand. Anne Lyne was eventually beatrified and then canonised. She also shares a feast day with fellow female martyr and saint, Saint Margaret Clitheroe. And today Anne Lyne is referred to as Saint Anne Lyne. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.